Hello. I think <laughs> I have no idea how this technology works. Um, I don't even know if you guys can tell me if you can hear this. Is there noise? How do videos work? <laughs> oh, I'm too old to learn how to survive in an apocalypse now. Um, I suppose we're here, aren't we? Hi, I'm Laura. Nice to meet you all. Um, thanks for coming. I don't know what I'm doing. It's all gone a bit mental, isn't it? So listen, um, years ago, I wrote a book and I quite like it. I mean, I say this, I haven't looked at it for about three years. Um, oh, Merry Christmas, guys. Oh, you can talk to me. I'm so sorry. I'm also very easily distracted. Um, but uh, so what I thought, I thought maybe today I'll just read like two chapters. Um, if you don't like it, Oh, for goodness sake, of course, it's fine. I have no idea if it's worth anyone's time. But can you just not be mean in the comments? Because I cry a lot, all right? So let's be friendly. And if someone is mean, please don't everyone else pile on. Let's just not reward bad behaviour. Um, so the novel, which also I'd forgotten, and I probably should have mentioned somewhere in um, in all the Twitter nonsense or Instagram or wherever you've come from, um, it's, uh, it's, it's about the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'd sort of forgotten, um, but it's like a fun end of the world, um, you'll see. So listen, should we just read a book together? And if you like it, good. I'm really, I hope you're all right. Um, I've got a cold and I'm miserable. So l let's just all be a bit weird together, shall we? So um, I don't know, should we read the book? I can't work out whether to do voices. I'll try and do some voices, maybe, but my accents are terrible. Um, and uh, unless you're a casting actor, in which case, oh, I'm so versatile. I've got so many different acting things I can do. Look, I can be, I can have no hair or hair. Mm, by the way, cool. So um, let's read it, shall we? As we know it, chapter one. I think they're in the drawer. Well, that's bloody helpful, isn't it? Which drawer? It's pitch black in here and ow! Oh, I've just stubbed my bloody toe. Sarah struck a match and relit one of the 49 candles that were currently adorning their living room. She lit another and another and then another, gently shaking the match dead before it could scorch her fingertips. Using the candle... No, I've made my first mistake here. Okay, ready? <laughs> Rewind. Using the first candle as a light, she began to bring the rest of the flames back to life. Hamish stood by the doorway, leaning against the back of the sofa, rubbing his foot with one hand. What was that? asked Sarah. Hamish said nothing. One minute the candles are all lit, and then suddenly, whoomph, and it's total darkness. Hamish stared at her. The power's gone out too. How bizarre. I didn't feel any wind at all, though, did you? Just that whoomph noise and then blackness. Hamish remained still and silent. Oh, Hamish, for goodness sake, say something. He shifted his weight and put his stubbed foot back on the floor. Now, Hamish is meant to be Scottish. Um, I don't think I can do a Scottish Can I do a Scottish accent? Hang on. Um, no, I can't, which is mental, because my grandparents are Scottish. Um... I don't think there's even a sentence I can say to get me into a Scottish accent. Okay, maybe if that's all Hamish had to say. So just imagine Hamish is Scottish, all right? There you go. <laughs> right, so um, rewind. He shifted his weight and put his stubbed foot back on the floor. What would you like me to say? Oh, I don't know. There was a silence, broken only by the soft tread of Sarah's slipper socks on the carpet and the puttering of 17 going on 18 flames. Did you hear the whoomph sound? He hesitated. All the words in his head gone dormant, an untimely game of vocabulary sleeping lions. A dull figure in Wellington boots and a mauve coat shuffling in the lounge. Hello, dear, is this only me? So the power's gone out here too, has it? Gosh, you managed to get these candles out quick, can not you? I think whole street might be a bit of an exaggeration for a lane with the two of us on it, but yeah. We're both out. Strangest thing, though, my fire went out, too, and my Tamagotchi died. You have a Tamagotchi? asked momentarily distracted. Well, I did have, said Mrs. Shoe. It was a great source of comfort to me after Colin died. Little panda he is. 
he seems to have gone. Sarah stared at the tiny old woman in front of her and tried not to laugh out loud at the idea of her sitting in front of Coronation Street with only an electronic panda for company. How many people would imagine on their wedding day that after 48 years of marriage, they could be there with a bunch of pixels? Extraordinary. She glanced over at Hamish. He looked upset. I mean, who could blame him? She wondered briefly whether it could have been her sheer overwhelming panic that blew the street. It had certainly felt that way, the look in his eyes with all those candles covering the room. All she remembered thinking clearly was, I hope he's put coasters under those. Of course he hadn't. There'd be an awful lot of wax to chip off tomorrow. Side note, you know who would have used coasters, don't you? Back to the story. She wouldn't have to do it, though. Today felt oddly final. She tried to ignore the bizarre kernel of realisation wriggling her attention between her, beneath her more pressing thoughts. Fantastic thing, really, because it's small enough to take anywhere and it has a whole range of emotions. Used to get terribly cross if I didn't clear up its messes in a timely manner. Strange, though, because I always thought pandas only ate bamboo, but this one seemed to like pizza, too. I suppose there's nothing to say pandas wouldn't like pizza in the wild. I suppose they just don't get the chance very often. Who'd think to give pizza to a panda? I'll go and check the fuse box. Hamish left the room abruptly and left Sarah and Mrs Shoe to watch the dancing lights of the 34 candles. Bad time, asked Mrs Shoe. Perceptive old bat, thought Sarah, hastily applying her mouth with a more appropriate response. No, no, not at all. We were just a little caught off guard by the power cut, that's all. It's very strange, isn't it? At least you didn't lose your best friend. I'm sort of glad it's over. What? Well, it is, isn't it? Sarah felt like they were both skirting around the same feeling, the feeling that perhaps that it was too ridiculous to say out loud. She opened her mouth to speak, but was saved the effort of trying to comfort a 74-year-old woman over the loss of her electric panda by Hamish re-entering the room. It's just all dead. It's like there's no power coming into the house at all. Might must be a blowout at the power station, or a cut cable or something. Um, sorry. I just had a paranoia that I was reading all this and no one was actually watching it. So I've just, but I think it's all still happening. So, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know how YouTubers do it. This is nerve wracking. It's much nicer playing to a room of people who are actually there. I've got newfound respect for YouTubers. Um, right, where are we up to? It's all dead. There's no power. Right. Must be a blowout at the power station or a cut cable or something. Not much we can do about it now. Might as well go to bed. He didn't take his eyes off Sarah, who flushed comfortably under his gaze and ran her finger absent-mindedly through the nearest flame. Don't do that, dear, said Mrs Shoe, breaking the silence. There's nothing less attractive than the smell of singed knuckle hair on a woman. Sarah ceased immediately. This evening was going to be hard enough to get over as it was without Hamish leaving for her for someone with flawless fingers. Would you like to stay with us tonight, Mrs Shoe? We've got a bed set up in the spare room. It, it, it's no bother. She knew her offer sounded lame, but suddenly all the energy in her body was somewhere else, melted away with the wax that was weeping onto her precious oak dresser. What did it matter? Thank you, dear, but it's all right. I'll be fine in my old place. I don't want to stay away too long in case Duncan wakes up. Duncan? The panda, said Hamish irritably. I'll walk you home, Mrs Shoe. Very kind of you, dear. The two of them shuffled out at the front door, leaving Sarah alone in the enchanting glow of the candle-filled living room. Fuck. She hastily blew out all the candles, enjoying the momentarily light-headed experience, and went to bed. When Hamish entered the room a thousand paranoid thoughts later, she pretended to be asleep. No point being awake all night talking about it, she thought. Her eyes didn't even flicker as he climbed into the bed next to her. He didn't try to make her stir. They both lay there most of the night both silently wondering if the sun would be rising as normal on the other side of oblivion. Right, okay, well that's chapter one. <laughs> Let's have a look. Is anybody, is it all right? I don't know. Yeah, okay, most of you are just saying you wish it was about your <laughs> Um, Maybe, I'd, I don't know, it would be fun to write something one day, but is it not getting a bit creepy? He's a real person. <laughs> and I really didn't expect some tweets about him to um, to to go all over. The I mean, he's going to have seen them, isn't he? And like the poor man, what if he's just mortified? Um, anyway, 
I'll open the door. Shall I open the door? Maybe that'll stop it buffering. The internet in our flat is rubbish. Um, well, anyway, that was chapter one. Oh, yay. Thanks, Ruth. I'm glad you're enjoying it. And, um, yeah, the tinsel looks sad. Sorry, I know. It's a bit shit, isn't it? But that's my advent calendar there. Look, I've got a refillable one because I'm an eco knob. So we put stupid stuff in there. Um, right, we'll go for... Um, We'll go for chapter two, shall we? I'll do two chapters tonight and then we'll do another one tomorrow. Chapter two. They suspected the apocalypse would have felt very different had you been in London when it happened. But for the residents of Norton Fitzwarren, it was a fairly unremarkable event at first. The only casualty so far was Duncan. They hadn't even given him a proper funeral because Mrs Shoe was still insisting she could still hear his little voice. The fact still remained, though, that an apocalypse had occurred. Some of the villagers were a little disappointed. There was no fire, no zombies, not a smidgen of brimstone to be found anywhere. It was simply that every person in the village had woken up knowing inexplicably that the world was over. Everything had taken on a new feeling. People who like science books and concrete will want to know how it was an apocalypse and how the villagers knew. They will want to know the premise that allowed it to happen, but sadly for both their curiosity and this author's chances of a film deal, the big painted streaks of havoc that make an apocalypse spicy are missing from this narrative. Imagine someone asking you what makes a Wednesday a Wednesday, other than the mass collusion that yesterday was Tuesday and it would be impetuous to bound carelessly into Thursday without a buffer. The day after the apocalypse, people had woken from their beds and not known how to start their days due to not knowing the point of continued existence. Oh my God, today anybody? If the mood could be compared to anything, it might be closest to the ambience of a bank holiday Monday for a group of people who don't normally work Mondays anyway. Everything seemed pointless. And when questioned on this pointlessness, the villagers knew unanimously that it was because of the end of the world, but no one wanted to be the first to say it because it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It would have been easier if it had been, well, apocalyptic. 20th century Fox would be beating the door down if blood had spurted from the gargoyles and severed limbs lit the footpath around the primary school. If showers of sparks prayed burning sulfur onto the limbs of innocence and brutal clouds of ash and decay pressed the, the air from heroic lungs, then I think even Russell Crowe might have been tempted to have a go at learning the accent. Trust me when I say no one is more disappointed than this author that there wasn't an opportunity for passage upon passage of persuasive adjectives and I might re-edit this to talk about people panic buying toilet roll. Turns out that's what we do. People didn't really know what to do. They thought about looting but agreed as a village that it seemed pretty unreasonable. There was only one shop in Norton Fitzwarren and the general consensus was that the apocalypse was probably not Nigel and Beryl's fault. In truth I think a lot of residents felt a little cheated by the whole thing. Where was the death and judgment they'd been promised? The village came to the mutual conclusion that it was probably safest to just wait it out and see what happened. It's just a new sensation in the air. Also, Mr Young from Acorn Terrace was certain he'd seen the Four Horsemen, which is convincing stuff. The world had ceased. It all felt very over, even if it was only three cows being chased by Mr Baxter's dog that Mr Young had seen. The children were simply ecstatic that school had been declared formally closed due to the end being nigh. Most teachers felt their planning was nothing more than a cantankerous obstacle to a large glass of wine on a good day, let alone when there was absolutely no chance of an Ofsted visit. Spending four hours on a Sunday planning for a six-year-old to eat glue in sync with others of its key stage capabilities was a thing of the past for the teachers of Norton Fitzwarren. By the way, Norton Fitzwarren is the actual village that I'm from in Somerset. The continuing lack of electricity was dampening levels of youth enthusiasm a little, but I'll say this for an apocalypse, it was doing wonders for child obesity levels. Having fewer defrosting freezer and keeping judgment day free. It wasn't until the third day that people's nervousness began to get the better of their civic duty to pretend nothing was happening. Families started to wonder if maybe they ought to be rationing. Mr Baxter was seen nervous nervously hurrying his Yorkshire Terrier around the block looking suspiciously at anyone who was complaining of hunger. I'd never thought the residents of Norton Fitz were incapable of eating a dog but all of a sudden you had to really feel for pet owners. 
especially the smaller ones. It's one thing to sacrifice a pet to feed a family, but poor old Mr. Baxter's Rufus would barely feed a child, and a small one at that. They suspected in London there must have been lots of fighting and scrapping for food. It was hard to tell without any form of media. There was a tangible feeling of gratitude that so far no one here had felt like doing any murdering. Now, I'm not sure 40% of the village really had the upper body strength. Murdering is a vocational business, a bit like teaching. You have to really want to do it or it just gets you down. Leave it to the city folk, they thought. We'll just have a nice calm apocalypse without any of the unsightly. By the fourth day, all the sitting around and waiting for a sign seemed frankly irresponsible, and they thought perhaps they ought to start thinking about getting organised. A meeting was set up, and it was decided they should form an apocalypse committee. These folk would be in charge of working out how to feed everyone warm during winter you know should this thing drag on privately I think they were all hoping they could get it wrapped up before the end of summer so that it wouldn't spoil Christmas heaven must be lovely at that time of year as a contingency plan they thought perhaps it might be prudent to bunch together a bit more if and when the weather turns like they do in foreign countries where they use a room for a few people instead of just one some of the villagers really weren't keen. Mrs Shu had just had a new cream carpet laid so it was agreed she could remain on her own so long as she didn't complain if she got cold. She said if it got too bad she didn't mind putting plastic mats down but people would have to take their shoes off. Nigel from the village shop quipped that there were no shoes at the shoes and they all laughed. There we go, that's that's chapter two. Um, I hope you've had fun, I don't know, it's taken my mind for everything for 20 minutes I will um I'll do chapter three and maybe four tomorrow that seemed fun didn't it but um if you've had a nice time spread the word or something just be nice to each other and um I hope it's been fun and maybe I'll get some less sad tinsel for tomorrow um but thanks for joining me and bye